So now that we have our canvases in place, the next thing we want to do is move over to the Sculpt workspace. And kind of like Sketch, you're not going to find Sculpt listed right here. You instead have to start creating an object that requires the Sculpt workspace. So I'll click here on Create Form. And these are T-spline bodies. These are used for organic shapes. Unlike solid modeling, which is more about mechanical precision, T-spline forms are more about working almost like with clay, so we'll be pushing these edges around back and forth and eyeballing until we get something that looks right instead of something that we know to be mathematically correct. Okay, so I'm going to create a box, and because my canvases are laid down with 0, 0 with the origin at the center, that's all good. I can click here on the XY plane, and then uh, 0 as the center of my box. And then I'll just eyeball out here to the corner. If I want, I can turn off snapping to grid to make that eyeballing a little easier and more precise. I've also got the direction set as symmetric, and that's why this thing grew on both sides of Z0. So maybe I'll make this just large enough so I can see that canvas poking out. I've also got my symmetry set to mirror, because after all, either side of the bicycle saddle is identical. And then depending on which orientation you have those canvases in, you'll have to pick either length, width, or height. So in my case, and I can toggle this on and off in just a second, but in my case, width is going to be the type of symmetry I want, and you can see that that's expressed by a solid green line, so I'll be symmetrical on either side there. Now, another thing that really just takes some practice, and you're never going to know until you try it, is the amount of faces that will divide your T-spline body in each of the three main axes. So right now I have length set to 6, width at 4, and height at 4. If you want, you can just do this visually by dragging these lines back and forth to have more or fewer divisions. And unfortunately, because of the way this works technically, you're not going to be able to alter this for the entire body later. So once this box is created, it's going to have a certain number of divisions, and while you can go in there and individually add or subtract them, you can't necessarily just tell the box, oh, I think I meant 8 along the length as opposed to 6. So just give it a try. Think about the degree to which each area of the design is going to undergo significant changes. It'll be possible later, for example, to have many subdivisions in a small area and to leave other areas with fewer subdivisions where less curvature is taking place. So just give it a shot. I think in terms of height faces, I might actually even go smaller because there really aren't that many changes top to bottom when it comes to this model. Also down here, you can see new body is my only option, so that's fine too. So I'll hit OK, and then we have an essential T-spline box to work with. The other thing I want to change is the appearance of the box because right now I can't see through in order to work with those canvases. And this is another thing I've read online. There doesn't seem to be a great way to change the opacity, of, at least of a sculpt object. So I'm going to use sort of a workaround here. So if I double click the object and then right click, I can go down to Appearance. And then as goofy as it is, instead of having this thing render out as satin steel, which is the default on my computer, I'm going to go down here and pick Glass. And then we'll just pick something simple like gray glass drag it on top, and that'll give us the effectively partial opacity that'll allow us to work. But I see a lot of people complaining about this online, so expect that in a future version of Fusion, it'll be easier to access these opacity sliders.